Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about a very important concept that is the general equilibrium analysis and there is a guaranteed question from this particular topic in the RBI DEPR examination. So please stay with me throughout the video and we'll also learn a shortcut trick to solve such questions quickly. So please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you do not miss any updates on the upcoming videos. So let's discuss this particular question through the help of an example here. Suppose there's a economy in which there are two individuals and there are two goods in the economy. So there are two individuals and there are two goods in the economy, right? And the preferences of the individuals A and B are given over the two goods, good one and good two. So the utility function is given for both these individuals. The utility function is the same for both the individuals. That is utility for x1 and x2, the two commodities is x1, x2. This is the preferences of both the individuals where the x1 value is obviously greater than or equal to zero. The commodity cannot be negative number and x2 is also greater than or equal to zero. So xi here is denoting the quantity of the good that is being consumed by the individual. Okay, now there it is also mentioned that there are three units in total of both these commodities in the economy. Okay, now you have to find out the equation of the contract curve. So first thing first is that contract curve tells you the set of all the Pareto optimal allocations. Okay, uh, the points which are Pareto optimal uh, given the utility functions of the individuals. Pareto optimal allocations are those allocations where if you do any kind of redistribution of the allocation, then any change will be beneficial to one individual, but it will not be beneficial to the other. So it is not like that both the individuals uh, are benefiting from the redistribution from that particular point. So if that is the case, then those points are Pareto optimal. Okay, so that is what we have to find out that those points will give you the contract curve. Okay, so for Pareto optimality, it should be the case that the marginal rate of substitution, right, for uh, individual one, that is individual A, should be equal to the marginal rate of substitution for individual B. So first we will find out the marginal rate of substitution for individual A clearly in this from given the utility function, we know that the marginal rate of substitution is mu1 divided by mu2, right? And similarly for individual B, it will be the same mu1 divided by mu2. That is the marginal utility of for commodity 1 divided by the marginal utility for commodity 2, right? So given this is the utility function, we know that the MRS would be for individual A, it would be x2A divided by x1A. Right. Similarly, for individual B, the MRS would be X2B divided by X1B. This is the marginal rate of substitution for both these individuals. And these need to be equal. That point will give you the, those points will be the points on the contract curve, which will be Pareto optimal. Also, because there are three units of each of the commodities, so this becomes the binding constraint. That means that x1a would be equal to 3 minus x1b and similarly x2a would be equal to 3 minus x2b right these are the binding constraints so when you use these binding constraints in this particular equation what do you have so instead of x1a i can write 3 minus x1 B and instead of x two A I can write three minus x two B, right? This should be equal to x two B upon x one B. So this implies what? That three minus x two B times x one B is equal to x two B times three minus x one B. So this in turn means that three x one B minus x1 b x2 b is equal to 3 x2 b minus x1 b x2 b right these two cancel out you can clearly see from here that what is it that you are getting x1 b should be equal to x2 b right this is 
what we have. That means that the amount of good one that individual B has should be equal to the amount of good B that the same individual has. Similarly, in same fashion, we, this also implies that X1A should also be equal to X2A, right? So this will happen where? Well, if the amount of both the commodities has to be equal and because there are equal amounts of both the commodities, so your Edgeworth box, the box diagram that you draw, right? This would be a square because both the commodities are present in equal amount. So the Edgeworth box is a square and this will be equivalent to the 45 degree line on the Edgeworth box where both these commodities the quantities of both the commodities has to be equal for both the individuals so see what i did was i went step by step i found out the mrs of both these individuals and we equated the mrs to find out that at what amounts of these quantities the mrs for both these individuals are equalized given the binding constraints that x1a plus x1b has to be equal to 3 and x2a plus x2b has to be equal to 3 right because the maximum amount of both the commodities is 3 units now instead of doing so much calculation an easier way of solving such kind of questions is that you straightforward draw the box diagram okay you quickly draw the edgeworth box we know that it is a square the total amount of the goods that is there for both uh, the individuals let's say this is the corner for individual b this is the corner for individual a so this is three units this total of uh, x1 un good is three units the total of x2 good is also three units right and we know that the utility function for both these individuals is Cobb Douglas so this is how the utility function for individual A would look like. Similarly, the in for individual B, if you look at from this particular origin, this is how the, the utility function for individual B would look like. Okay, And the Pareto optimal allocations would be the set of all these points which are tangent because at this point only the MRS for individual A and MRS for individual B are equal. Now, this will be equal because it's a square so obviously it will be passing through the 45 degree line so this is your contract curve this is the contract curve so instead of solving so much uh, for the mrs for both these individuals you could quickly draw the box diagram and visualize yourself about what would be the equation of the contract curve so this process is much faster and it will also save a lot of time in the final examination so try solving uh, these questions as much as possible with the help of diagrams. Diagrams really save a lot of time in the examination instead of working out through the calculation. Uh, also, just let me give you one other food for thought before I end the video. Here, this uh, there were equal amounts of both the goods. So that's why it was easier. We got a 45 degree line that is the contract curve. But suppose the... the the goods are not present in equal amounts. So in that case, the Edgeworth box will be a rectangle shape. Okay. Suppose X1 is present in three units and X2 is in four units. So then your Edgeworth box diagram will be a rectangle. And in that case, it will obviously not be a 45 degree line, right? In that case, because if X1 is three units, right? So uh, this would be three and here, this, this length would be greater. This is how the Edgeworth box would now look like. So here the slope would not be equal. Rather the slope, this particular line has a, a steeper slope, right? So that's how your equation for the contract curve would change. We also have a workshop on the RBI DEPR examination. This workshop is completely free. It is today at 7 p.m. If you wish to enroll, you can go to our website and enroll for this particular video workshop you can also find the link for enrollment in the description of this particular video here we'll be discussing 
all the nuances of the RBI DEP examination, like syllabus, books, strategy, whether to prepare for phase two simultaneously, when should you start for the preparation, the relevance of uh, different topics, and how can you strategize your preparation. So hope to see you in this particular workshop. You can also call on this number so that you can ask if you have any other queries related to any of the uh, regulatory body examinations. Also, you can mail us your doubts at this particular email ID. Thank you so much.